Hey, this is Alec from Grace End, and in today's video, I'll show you the process of calculating, marking out, building, and installing a flight of outdoor stairs. I'll provide all the mathematical formulas with diagrams and explanations, then walk you through each stage of the set out and building process. The first step when building a set of stairs is to calculate the number of risers and goings. The riser is the height of each step and the going is the width of each tread. There needs to be an equal amount of risers in a set of stairs and there's always one less going than the amount of risers. The rise and going are marked onto the timber stringer. The stringers are the pieces of timber that run diagonally up the side of the stairs. The stairs connect to the stringers and the stringers bear the weight to which the treads are connected. I've added this table to show the minimum and maximum sizes for stair treads and risers. The first step is to obtain the rise of the flight of stairs. This is the height from the top of the stair landing to the ground level where the stairs begin. In this project, the height of the landing is 660 millimeters from the ground level. The next step is to calculate the height of each riser. To establish the number of risers, I'm going to begin by dividing an average outdoor riser height, I'll say about 170 millimeters, into the rise of the stairs. I'll divide 660 millimeters by 170. This equals 3.8. As the number of risers needs to be equal, I'll round up the riser height to an equal amount. I'll round up to four stair risers. Therefore, 660 millimeters divided by four equals 165 millimeters. So there will be four equal risers from the ground level starting position to the top of the stair landing. The next step is to work out the number and size of the goings, which are the stair treads. I don't have a restricted landing point, so I'll choose a 265 millimeter going with a 25 millimeter overlap. I will achieve this by using two pieces of 140 by 45 millimeter timber with a 10 millimeter gap in between each going. The length of the total going of the flight of stairs will be the distance from the face of the first riser to the face of the last riser. To confirm the stairs fall into the acceptable slope relationship, we'll use the ratio 2R plus G, which means two risers plus the going needs to equal between 550 millimeters and 700 millimeters. This just means that the stairs are comfortable and safe to walk up and down. I can move on to the next step of marking the tread positions onto the timber stringers. I'll mark a 50 millimeter margin line along the inside length of both the timber stringers. Then I set up a steel square with the calculated rise and going measurements for each step. I start the measurements from the margin line and set the square to the correct position using buttons that clamp onto the steel square. I start from one end and mark the going and rise places onto the stringer, making sure to allow for the point of attachment notch, which is where the stairs will sit and attach onto the landing. I like to cut the end of the string off 50 millimeters past the end of the last riser to match up the margin line. These initial set out positions represent the top of the tread and the face of each riser. I can then mark the front and bottom of the tread positions onto the stringer. I mark accurately as one of the following steps involve housing the tread locations into the timber stringer with a circular saw and sharp chisel. This is the first timber stringer all marked out and ready to cut to length, then rebate the tread positions. Next, I'll cut the stringer to the correct size, starting with the bottom level and plumb cuts, then moving on to cutting out the point of attachment notch at the top. I'll use the first stringer as a template to mark the length of the opposite side. Then I can repeat the process of marking out the tread positions onto the opposite stringer. Before I mark out the second stringer, 
I'll first cut it to the correct size. If you feel like you have gained any value from this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. I'll mark out the second stringer using the same steel square method with buttons and pre-calculated measurements. Where I can't fit in a steel square to mark the stringer, I'll set up a saw protractor set to the right angle to mark the line. Before I rebate all the tread positions into the stringers, I'm going to cut all the timber treads to length. There are three goings, so I'm going to need six lengths of material cut to 900 millimeters. To rebate and house the tread positions into the timber stringers, I'll adjust and set up my saw to a depth of about 12 millimeters and run the saw through the tread positions at about five to 10 millimeters apart. This will easily allow me to notch out the rest of the timber rebates with a sharp chisel. Once all the tread positions are rebated, the next step is to give all the timber a light sand with the orbital sander. Once everything is lightly sanded, I'll work out where the centre of each tread position is and drill a 5mm hole from the inside of the timber stringer. This will allow me to easily buccal screw the stair members together. As I'm going to install the steps into stirrups, I'll need to cut a bit off the bottom of the stringers to allow me enough space to concrete the stirrups into the two footings. I also cut a level line 50 millimeters from the top of the deck in the point of attachment. Next, I'll add a couple of coats of decking oil to give the timber extra protection from the elements and also match the Merbel decking color. To assemble and attach all the stair members together, I'll slide the treads into position and fix each tread into the stringer with a 100mm bugle screw from each end. I'll use the pre-drilled holes I previously drilled. The bugle screws will hold the stairs firmly together, but I'm also going to add two lengths of threaded rod to firmly tighten the stair stringers together. As the last going will be hard against the face of the deck, there'll be no overhang, so I'm gonna have to rip the last tread to fit into the face of the deck. To make sure the stairs never separate, I installed two lengths of threaded rod into the stairs, one at the top and one at the bottom, and then I tightened with bolts and washers. To attach these stairs to the ground, I'm going to install metal stirrups on each stringer. These stirrups will be concreted into a footing on both sides of the stairs. I like to have the stringers sitting on stirrups that allow about 50 millimeters clearance from the ground level. Once the footing holes are dug, I can now install the stairs into position. This will allow me to concrete the stair stirrups into the footings whilst the stairs are held to the correct height. I'll pack the stairs until the treads are level then finish attaching the stairs to the deck. I'll mix and pour concrete into the footings, then finish smooth with a timber block and a metal screed. Once the concrete footings have been finished smooth, I'll make sure to clean the stairs with a wet cloth to ensure there's no wet concrete left on the stairs. Once the concrete has set, the last step is to give the stairs a good clean, lightly sand and then apply a final coat of oil. Now that's the end of the video, thanks for watching.